Now obviously this onion here is dried out a little more than this onion here. Still got a little bit of green on it. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Monday, May 8th here in South Georgia. And today we're gonna check on our onions. We've got curing on the ground here behind me. See if they're ready to get out of the sun and under the barn. If they are, we'll show you our storage system underneath the barn there where we try to keep things nice and cool and dry. After that, we'll talk about kind of the future of this plot here behind me as we get ready to plant some watermelons there. And we might even grab a few groceries out of this plot. So exactly a week ago, we harvested four of our double rows of short day onions from that little blank space right there. And we laid them on the ground here so we could start the curing and drying process. So over the last seven days, we've had no rain, which is not ideal for everything in the garden, but it is ideal for drying these onions here. So with the exception of that one there, and that one right there which looks pretty gnarly not really sure what's going on with those two all the rest of these onions are drying and curing as expected now as i told you in that video when we pull these onions what we're wanting to see is these tops get brown and crispy and also the roots get nice and crispy there to the point where we can just kind of tear them off the bottom of the onion like that now obviously this onion here is dried out a little more than this onion here still got a little bit of green on it but they've been sitting out there seven days i think they're ready to go under the barn and just as a side note these three onions here which were our three biggest ones it's a pretty little heavy bundle right here you could hurl those get a pretty good little workout but anyways after we did that harvesting video last monday i got out the scale and we weighed a few of these i think we posted a reel on our facebook and instagram accounts showing us weighing them but anyways one of these was as close as it could be to three pounds without being three pounds so not quite a three pound onion i think the other two were about two and three quarter pounds so still haven't grown a three pound onion but we got mighty mighty close so there's always room for improvement next year so now that these have dried and cured well enough for my standards i'm going to grab the wheelbarrow we'll take these underneath the barn put them on the storage rack and i'll show you what it looks like all right so what looked like a heap of onions out there doesn't look like quite so many once we get them on our storage rack so i built this many years ago with hardware cloth two by fours four by fours works great underneath the barn here and so i've got them separated by variety got the white onions and the georgia boys over there and then we've got the timons right here and then the dp sweets on the other side now there is a little bit of strategy as far as how i lay these onions in here i don't want bulbs stacked on top of bulbs but it's okay if i've got bulbs stacked on top of somewhat dead onion foliage so what i do is i start in the center there and kind of work my way back to each edge and put them in there as tight as i can get them that way we maximize our space but so that we don't have bulbs on top of bulbs now as i was gathering these from outside and bringing them underneath the barn i did notice a few of them that felt a little squishy you can see the outside of that one's a little wrinkled if you grow enough onions you're gonna have a few runts like this so we don't want to put this one up there on the rack with the good onions because it might make those start rotting so we'll just put this one in the worm bin we won't let this one run the rest of our good onions so this storage system isn't perfect but it works okay for us we can usually get these onions to store for a few months on this hardware cloth underneath the barn here and as i told you on that previous onion video these white onions will store a lot longer than some of those flattened onions so we'll try to eat the flat ones first because they have the least storage potential it does stay a good bit cooler under here than it does outside not as cool as they would be if we put them inside the house somewhere but I don't have anywhere inside my house to put this many onions. Now, according to the National Onion Association website, the ideal storage temperature for onions is anywhere from 45 to 55 degrees. We're not gonna get that even if we do put them inside the house. So that's one downside 
to living down here where we can plant onions early a lot of people are jealous of how early we can plant onions you know in november grow them throughout the winter we get to harvest them now but we don't have great storage conditions after we harvest them those of you that live up north and grow long day onions when you harvest your onions the temperatures are kind of starting to cool off in the fall and you have really good outside ideal storage conditions so there's plus and minuses to every growing zone yes we're able to get our onions in early but they don't store as well as some of the onions growing up north so now let's talk about what's left in this plot and plans for this plot going forward so the other day I had somebody message us on facebook and ask what could they plant behind their onions so once you pull up your onions what can you plant in that spot and i told them pretty much anything so onions aren't one of the vegetables where we struggle with a lot of disease we don't really ever spray our onions don't really have a lot of insect pressure on the onions don't really have a lot of disease pressure on the onions so not a whole lot of worries about crop rotation with the onions the one thing to note there onions are heavy feeders so they've probably consumed a lot of nutrients in your soil whatever you do plant behind the onions just be prepared to feed it well so if you were to plant corn behind the onions you'd probably need to really double down on the nitrogen assuming those onions had kind of soaked up all what was there now we're gonna be planting watermelons behind our onions in this plot pretty soon, but obviously we've still got some stuff growing out here, so it's not like we can just fill this plot with watermelon plants right now. We've got these red onions, which are hanging on a little bit, but I'll probably pull all those within the next week or so, starting to see some of the greenery die back on those, and some of them are starting to fall over. We've got this blank spot where we pulled all those onions we put in the barn earlier. I've got it pretty clean, still a few weeds out there. I need to get out of there before we can plant. I've got my row starts for my drip tape left in place there. And I think I can get two rows of watermelons in this spot right here. And then as we clear some of the rest of this out, it will open up more room for those plants to vine. But it's gonna take them a little while to start vining. So I think we'd be safe. Go ahead and put in two rows right here. This stuff over here, this more cool season stuff, cabbage and broccoli, it's not gonna hang on much longer because we're expecting some temperatures in the low 90s later this week. So not gonna be much longer on this stuff. I might go ahead and get ahead of that cabbage today. And I think we're starting to get a few little broccoli heads. I think I can see one down in there. But I doubt those broccoli heads are gonna get very big before they get seedy, considering how hot it is out here. So we'll just take what we can get from that broccoli there. Got a few more scapes to trim off our elephant garlic. It's not gonna be much longer on that either. So this plot should clear out pretty quick. And that's good because our watermelon transplants here in the greenhouse are almost ready to be pulled from these cells and stuck in the ground. We ended up getting pretty dang good germination on these seedless varieties. Our saran wrap trick worked even better this year. Also minimizing the water we give to these until they get up and going. Been feeding these a little bit of AgriThrive every day. They're looking good and they'll be ready to plant probably within the next week. So the last couple of years, we've staggered our watermelon planting. So instead of planting a whole plot at one time, put in a couple rows, wait a week or two, put in another couple rows. And what that does is kind of give us a more continual harvest throughout those early to midsummer months. That way all the watermelons don't just come in all at one time. So that's what we'll be doing again here this year, partly out of necessity because we only have so much open space right now, but it should end up working out pretty well. Now back to this cabbage here real quick. So this type of cabbage, this Chinese cabbage, gets a lot of pest pressure from me, always. Every single time I plant it, no matter if I plant it in the fall, or in the middle of winter, or in late winter, early spring, like we did this right here. Now I haven't sprayed this like I should have, just because I wasn't gonna put too much effort into growing it. It was just kind of a space filler with some extra transplants we had in the greenhouse. You can see there, some of those leaves have been munched on pretty hard. So I don't know that every plant is gonna give us something to eat here, but I think there's one or two in here 
we might can grab. Let me see if I can find a nice one. So this plant has some insect damage as well, not quite as much as some of those other plants. The head on it hasn't quite tightened up completely like it should before you harvest it, but go ahead and get it now before the bugs do any more significant damage. The head size on these is pretty good. That's a pretty dang big head of cabbage right there. Once we pull back some of these outer leaves, we should have a good amount of groceries there. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you wanna see how we were able to get those seedless watermelon seeds to germinate so well in the greenhouse, check out this video right here. When we started those seeds, we'll show you all the tips and tricks we used to get those pesky seeds to germinate. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.